What's going on guys? Big BB back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have yet another free 99 Marketplace find. I dubbed myself the free 99 king. I just, I just keep winning. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright guys, you know Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Be sure to also like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know about your free 99 deals. Yes. Yes. Free 99. I think I should copyright the wording. I don't even know where to stand. <laughs> I have no idea where to stand. This is actually much more natural. Cool. There you go. Yes, let me know down below if you've ever scored any free 99 stuff. I just keep, uh, I don't know. I keep one-upping myself. <laughs> Again, this video is not gonna be talking about me boasting and just, I'm just excited. Um, it's mind-blowing. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but uh, I keep, um, I, I keep doing the unimaginable. <laughs> what a little story I have about this. Oh, I, I'm, I don't know where to start, but uh, yeah, I've said it many times. This was free. Free 99. That's what it is. Like, you know, free. Uh, yes, you're looking at right now a Pandora's Box Class Ultra Fire Power 3-in-1 42-inch 2-player on-rail mounted shooter arcade. <laughs> man oh man that's that's I, I don't know where to start <laughs> now again please don't take this as me showing off showboating me trying to you know be elite and all that don't don't take it that way uh, just like in all my videos I get excited uh, I'm an excited person especially when you get a score like this that's the best way to say it this is an amazing score Got a little bit of a story behind it. Uh, really grateful uh, for the guy that was giving it away. He gave me a little bit of a of a story when I picked it up. Uh, yeah, this this has a, this has quite a story. But basically, um, you know, I've said it in many times in all my past videos. I have my notification bells on Facebook Marketplace. Anytime my little search terms such as arcade and pinball, it's really all it is. I get a little bing. And a little message from Facebook that says, hey, there's some new stuff related to your previous searches of arcade. Sure enough, I click on it. It's, it was honestly, it was around maybe a, about 10 o'clock at night. And I see this. It wasn't the actual stock photo. It wasn't like, it was actually a photo. I'll probably post it here. It was a picture of this. It's just kind of like on this side of the cabinet. You can't really see the entire cabinet. Um, and it was in this guy's business. He wrote shooting game free and I obviously messaged <laughs> this guy was located in New Jersey it was about I would say an hour an hour and a half away I think it was 60 miles in total I hit him messaged him messaged me right back he said sure come pick it up I said I will be there tomorrow at around two o'clock he said perfectly fine with me I'll see you tomorrow and that was all it took <laughs> to land this score oh man again he didn't have much detail I didn't really want to you know I don't, I'm not again it's free I said it in the past before whenever it's free you don't really go and ask like a million questions um, let's go real quick because we're looking at the picture right now let's just talk about what the ad in general said now as you see the picture there the ad says here it works fine just needs a little repair like speaker works sometimes Please bring the help with you as I won't be able to help and bring it out from the garage. Need to remove and keep few things back in garage. Thank you. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, I messaged him and I said to him, I was like, do you really think you need two people to move this? Because usually on an arcade pickup, I always aim to go alone. Um, I just like to be alone. Uh, I'm hard-headed, especially when it comes to like if I have to lift things. 
I've done it many times, just like the Orion, just like a Pac-Man machine. My lift gate on my truck, you literally just lean it on the back, grab it from the legs, and woof, it goes up. It's like one swift movement. All the weight is really on the truck. This guy said, listen, you definitely need two people. I cannot help you. I just had surgery. Be sure to bring someone. I said, you know what? I'll bring someone. And with me, I bought Ray from RPEG Electronics. He was super excited to join in on this. Uh, it was very funny. Like I said, it was at night. I said, Ray, what are you doing tomorrow? He's like, nothing. What do you need? And I said, hey, you want to come with me to Jersey and uh, pick up an arcade cabinet? And he goes, I'll be there. So again, shout out to Ray. RPEG Electronics. I saw him a lot uh, recently. And man, what a little journey we had yesterday. And it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Just seeing him get excited for this, he was super excited. You should have seen the messages going back and forth. He was just excited to like, I guess, get his hands on a real arcade. Again, usually in this instance, I like to go alone. Uh, I'm not a freeloader. I obviously, I, I basically fed Ray. I bought him lunch. <laughs> Ray was like, Vic, I just want to come with you, bring it back to your house, load it up. Let's see what this thing does. I said, Ray, cool. And he's like, I want to make a video. And he actually went live on his channel and you could just go over there and you could actually see us unpacking it kind of with like real, uh, you know, um, reactions and stuff when we started to boot it up and all that. And I'm talking about the pickup. We'll talk real fast about it. Basically, we went, the guy had a picture, as you could see, it looks like it's in a, biz in a business. And I was like, all right, we're going to go see a business. As I was messaging this guy from Facebook, he even said, hey, I have some more arcade stuff. Maybe you want to, you know, check it out. But he wrote there, it will not be free. I said, okay, cool. I'll come with Ray. Ray was all like, I got cash in hand. If he's got like guns lying around, I'm going to buy him. I was like, all right, Ray, let's see what he's got. So we pull up to this guy's house. It is not a business. And um, we were, I was kinda, it was kind of sketchy because I was like, where is he going to have this arcade cabinet? Because we don't see anything. Sure enough, uh, we saw the garage. He lifted up the garage and it was just packed to the brim with like, I would say like construction remodel supplies, like two by fours and all that. And sure enough, way in the back, behind a bunch of boxes, behind a bunch of two by fours was this. <laughs> it was buried in the bag so again shout out to ray me and ray again i'm actually very happy I, I'm, I'm the type where anyone that comes to help me um i do all the legwork uh so you know the guy said like you know we have to move these two by fours and boxes and i said to ray i was like ray chill out like you could just and he's like no vic i'm here to help you so i really am grateful for ray i'm like that i'm the type of person where like i'll help you like don't worry let's you know i, I just help you out i'm here might as well help you so we did have to wind up moving a lot of boxes we were probably we probably spent about maybe 10 to 15 minutes and not to mention the, the biggest thing about the story the the weather in new york new jersey it was pouring rain we we're talking like flood it was insane amount of rain i really didn't even want to pick this thing up because of the amount of rain but like i said in my past videos anytime you get free 99 you jump on it because if you wait it's gonna slip out of your hands but basically long story short we cleared the path me and ray uh, Ray thought that this was two pieces and I was like no this cabinet right here is one solid piece The TV monitor is removable. So that might be your two pieces, but as far as this entire base No, it is one piece. We're gonna talk about the cabinet in a second my little research I did with it basically moved a couple of things around Got the cabinet out wrapped it. I wrapped it like a mummy like I usually do for all my customers I bought my my blankets. I bought my wheels my dollies Basically wheeled it to the truck. Ray's like, what do we do now, Vic? I said, Ray, very simple, follow me. We're gonna take one end. We went up over the tailgate. He goes, now what, Vic? He's like, he's like, do you want me to jump in the tailgate? I was like, no, Ray, let gravity do its thing. We go to the rear, we lift and slide. And then sure enough, that was it. And Ray's like, oh, that was actually pretty smart. Good job. And I was like, yes, that's what I normally do, Ray. In all brutal honesty, I feel like I could have done this alone. Um, it wasn't as heavy as like advertised. But uh, either way, it's always great to have Ray. And uh, basically it cost me a $30 sandwich from Jersey Mike's. <laughs> That's, you can't go wrong with that, right? Now to finalize this thing with this Facebook guy uh, and a couple of things I'm very grateful for. He had other stuff. He actually had two Outrun Racer games. He didn't have it with him there, but he said his like, brother has a storage unit. But in his unit, he had this monstrous modern Dance Dance Revolution. It wasn't DDR, but it was just... It was just this huge DDR cabinet style thing, you know, DDR. Two play, it was, it was huge. It was actually, it couldn't fit in the garage. It had to go on its side. And while it was on its side, it was six feet tall on its side. And I'm like, dude, 
uh, you know, he's like, do you want this? And I was like, how much do you want for it? And he's like, I need at least two grand. And I was like, no, I'm not into DDR cabinets and that, that thing's a monster. Uh, yeah, that was, there was no way I was going to be able to do that. He did have a Chew Links, uh, which was interesting, but he wanted like $1,500 or $1,000 for it. I was like, nah. And even Ray was like, nah, nah, it's, it's all scuffed up and all that. Uh, either way, we walked out with this free 99. Now the last little thing to mention about this, as we were helping him move these boxes, and again, I'm very grateful for Ray. Usually I'm the type where if I'm ever coming into your house, if I move the couch, I'm gonna move it back for you. That's just how I am. Uh, and I'm really happy to see that Ray was like that. Basically we went and the boxes that we moved, the two by fours, we did put them right back. Uh, the guy was very graceful. Uh, you know, I would be too, again, taking a free cabinet, but he did hit me with this one little thing while we were wrapping this up. He said, hey, Vic, man, I'll be honest, dude. We, I got like 25 DMs slash PMs on Facebook Marketplace of people wanting this. And uh, he's like, I did say, I did promise you it. You know, like, like, you know, he's just talking. But he did hit me with this one thing where he's like, somebody even offered me $500 for this. But because I already promised it to you, I, I turned it down. And um, I mean, I'm, I've, I, what do you want to say? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just happy that he did keep his word. He was like, Vic, honestly, like you were going to come, you're right away. Uh, I'm just grateful for it. Um, me personally, if he wanted $500, it would have been a pass. I would not have wanted this. Uh, everybody kind of knows me. Uh, I have no desire to have arcade cabinets, but again, anytime you get free 99, you jump and then ask questions later. Um, in all honesty, yes, it is a great score. It works to an extent. I do have to do some work to get this thing properly working. Um, it's kind of mind boggling. Uh, you know, I was talking to the guy and I'm looking inside the cabinet. Like I said, if you go to Ray's live stream, you could actually see us with live, like, you know, reactions and commentary. Um, I can't tell if the guy, he didn't seem like a tech, tech kind of guy, but, um, upon opening it with Ray, uh, kind of scary, actually the direct power, uh, input, like the power coming into the cabinet, the actual entire negative side was ripped out. Um, I don't know if that was like in transit or, you know, basically if somebody plugged it in, it might've caused a fire. Um, there's a lot of like, just, you're talking like eight wires bunched together into like one socket. There's, there's a lot going on. So part of me is like, did he get it like this? Um, we have an issue with the audio and as of right now, we do have an issue with player two recoil. Uh, before we get into that though, let's talk about the cabinet. Let me tell you about the research I did for this cabinet. Now again, if you take a look at this cabinet, there's a couple of key things, such as this Ultra Fire Power logo branding on it. If you do a quick Google search for Ultra Fire Power, you actually come up with a bunch of AliExpress or Alibaba ads. Uh, two specific ones, and it looks like my buddy Retro Ralph uh, did a little video on this ultra fire power. Now you're gonna find two separate ads. You're gonna find an ad that is just the guns and the PC. And then you're gonna find an ad for this entire cabinet. <laughs> so obviously I saw the ad for this entire cabinet. So many different ads, so many different pricing. And again, the big thing when you go with Alibaba or AliExpress, the big thing that you're missing is there's no shipping in the amount. So I have no idea what this guy paid. Um, I don't really use Alibaba, so I don't really know how it works. Sometimes when I read Alibaba ads, it says like you need to order like 10 minimum. And I'm like, well, who's gonna order 10 of these? Um, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. But going on with that Alibaba trend, like I mentioned before, he had two racing cabs outrun like branded, kind of like, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It looked like a, a, a Mario DX cabinet. Uh, but if you, I'm pretty sure if you look up on Alibaba, like a, a you know, virtual racing game cabinet, you would see that. So it looks like he got a couple of things from Alibaba. Um, again, ultra fire power. Uh, that's basically the research. Luckily when I researched it, I was able to see, and again, it's in like centimeters. 
I was able to see the like you know the size of it, dimensions of this, and I was able to see the width of uh, the the weight of this. This thing clocked in as far as the website. It shows that it clocks in at around 230 pounds. So when I read that, I was like, you know what, Ray, come with me. Let's just be safe. I'll be brutally honest. The TV is the heaviest thing because this is one of those like. It's a VGA connection monitor TV, D shell, D case, but it's just a behemoth of a TV. It's an old TV. Um, you know, it's kind of like a CRT versus an LED LCD. Uh, that's the best way to compare. So I feel like a lot of the weight is here. Luckily, this came off. This comes totally separate. But, you know, the cabinet itself, not too bad. It is on casters. It looks like two casters, those are very shaved down and, like, you know, Instead of being round, it's got like a flat part. So I might just swap out the casters. I do have a couple of plans. This right now is just showing off what I got. But stay tuned on another video. We're gonna. My main objective is to fix the slight issues I had. And not to mention, I'm Vic VP. I'm gonna be adding some stuff to this to kind of leaven it up and uh, get you more immersed into the ultra firepower. <laughs> Now, it was pretty cool, like I said, Ray, even on Ray's stream, Ray's like, I'm so excited because this is my first ever actual arcade, like, commercial cabinet. Uh, he's never worked on one, so he was just really excited for it. Uh, it does have, like, this Chinese-style, like, coin door, which I really hate. Uh, basically, it has it where you, it's like a spring. You gotta put in the coin type you want it to receive, so we have a quarter in it. This did have a bunch of tokens in it though i have like uh 16 worth of tokens um yeah so i don't really like these coin doors but it is what it is it's very cool that at least you could set it to coin mode so in all honesty as far as business wise you want to talk about a money maker this this should make money easily again you got two on the rail mounted guns yes pink and blue uh I'm not going to spray paint these. I'll tell you what the plan is basically. But right now, my objective right now with this, I'm not keeping this. I obviously will not keep this. Um, size is a thing. This thing right now on the Alibaba ad, it said six feet. And it is really, eh, you're at like 55 inches, but maybe with the TV, Whatever. Let's say you're at five and a half feet. That's long. That's a, that's a long cabinet. I'd rather have a pinball machine. Um, but yes, in all honesty, I'm not keeping this. This right here, and again, business is business. This will be a quick flip and sell. I will be selling this. And uh, yeah, that's just how the cookie crumbles. But I do have to put some work in it. Again, like I said, we right now have an issue. There's two issues, main issues that we have. Uh, audio is one thing. There's a constant hum. Shout out to Ray. Ray said, Vic, we have to basically give the amp its own power. Because right now there's one power supply and there is a lot of lines going in and out of it. So he said, Vic, if you put it on its own power supply, you should reduce that hum. I am thinking about also upgrading the speaker. Um, you know, I feel like it could be louder. Maybe we could put a subwoofer in it. Uh, and then the biggest thing right now is player two the solenoid on it it looks like there is a board issue not on the gun but inside the actual arcade cabinet now i'm not going to bore you too much with this but basically we're going to open up this nice little side door really this cabinet is it's it's empty um it's just this is kind of the heart of the system so basically you can see here we do have an audio amp for the speaker and there is only one speaker again watch ray's live stream we were able to play one game with audio and the other two games had no audio. I went in here and I was like, wait, I could, I could faintly hear the audio in the speaker. Said, let me swap the wire from left channel to right channel. And then sure enough, we had audio. So I, I guess it's set for mono or I don't know how to explain it. I'm gonna, like I said, that's kind of why I wanna do a stereo mod. Uh, I'll figure that later on, but basically, we do have also a power supply here. This power supply has 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volts. But the amount of wires that are going into this power supply, it's crazy. Uh, that's why we have this hum. And part of me thought that was the issue why my player 2 solenoid um, was, was, was misfiring. Or I'll go into detail with that. 
The last thing you do have an actual PC. This is the Pandora Box Ultra Firepower. It's a PC with this nice little tiny 16 gigabyte SanDisk USB drive. That is basically your entire system. The PC, it's an actual PC. So if I turn on the switch, it'll do kind of a BIOS. Uh, and it does need this USB drive to boot. And then sure enough, after about a minute of booting up, you get to gameplay. Now, I'm not gonna bore you too much, but basically, all in all, today I spent all day trying to figure out what's wrong with our Player 2 solenoid. There's two boards here. This red board here is 24 volts in. It's basically taking like the trigger and then sending out the pulse to the solenoid. There is an issue with the Player 2 out. Um, it's basically constantly closed. So that solenoid is just, it's, it's magnetized the entire time. This green board here, I don't want to talk too much about it, but basically this has other little add-ons, 12 volt add-ons. So when you see the next video, you're going to see what 12 volt toys I'll be adding to it. Very cool, honestly, seeing that 12 volt and then really honestly discovering this 12 volt board and what it could do, very, uh, very pleasing. Without further ado, let's do some gameplay real quick. We'll bump up the amp. It does have an attract mode. I don't wanna go too loud. But I'm actually surprised that this thing does have an attract mode. Let's, uh, I don't wanna watch the attract mode, but there's a line. It's your basic Pandora box hilarious line. Uh, oh, you can probably see it right now. I hope you can see it on the screen. So it says ultra firepower, enjoy lift with something, I missed it, <laughs> with quality. Enjoy lift with quality. It's, uh, it's your standard, <laughs> it's your standard inspirational quote. We do have it set right now to free play. You could set it to coin mode, but basically very simple. You, may, you, you gotta move player one. There is this House of the Dead 3 that Ray basically said, this is a modified House of the Dead 3. We then have Far Cry, and we do have Aliens. Upon inspection, you can kind of see the already first mod I did. I don't know if you can see it there. This did have the LCDs in the rear here. Sadly though, they were dummies. They were, they were, there's no actual circuit board to it. I basically spray painted it black. This way, the person that's gonna buy it, they don't think that it's an actual broken thing or whatever. Um, we could run House of Dead, uh, House of Dead 3 Evolution. We'll watch like the loading. Watch this loading for House of Dead 3. It's actually loading the PC game. And again, it's doing it all on its own. It's like an AHK script running in the background. But what's crazy is that, like Ray said, it's like a modified version. This starts with the machine gun in your hand with 16 bullets, something like that. Uh, so again, I can press start. It's very simple. The front two buttons here, red and green, it's just the start buttons. And you do have three buttons on the gun. You have your trigger, uh, grenade on some games, and your flamethrower here. So without further ado, I could skip the cutscene, press the start button. Now if I hold the button down, you can kind of hear like that. So it's got like that little kind of pulse, but then if I actually fire, like, you know, really fire, uh, the solenoid works, it's really good. So, that's me right now. You can hear it much faster and stuff. But again, the big thing is that looking at the gun on the screen and the bullets on the bottom, that is not House of the Dead 3. <laughs> now there is an option in the menu, there's the service menu that you could change the starting bullets. I haven't touched that yet, but basically as you can see, player one, beautiful, works, solenoid, and all. And again, that's a 24 volt solenoid going on. Now player two, I could press start, I could bring them in, but as you can see, I have no solenoid going on it. There is a reason why. Again, if you watch Ray's live stream, I noticed it that I had no solenoid. And upon me noticing that, I'm gonna be in frame, upon me noticing that I was kind of like here, and while I'm here, I could actually smell what smelled like an electrical burn slash electrical fire. So I put my nose here and I'm like, oh yeah, this is like burning. And I went to touch the top here and it was hot. And then you can see me and Ray frankly went frank, frantic, frantically, 
went to go unplug the cabinet. Long story short, again, there is a board in the base, that red board I was showing you, basically it left the solenoid on. The, the power, 24 volts, this solenoid was on and it stayed on. So that means that before this guy, whatever he did in the business, basically fried it. Can we see that? Take a look at that. That is a crispy 24 volt solenoid right there. So again, this is why, well, this isn't really why, but this is an example. Oh, wow, this is really coming off. <laughs> but yeah, that is a crispy 24 volt solenoid. Now, shout out to Ray. I went back to Ray today because Ray had one solenoid. I did pay for it, I did buy it. Came home, I was all excited. I plug it in, and sure enough, the solenoid clicked, but it didn't release. Basically, that means that there's a wire cross somewhere. Basically the 24 volt is, it's always on. And this staying on, who knows in the guy's business for let's say 24, 36 hours, it would let you and leave you to a crispy solenoid that basically burnt out. Now again, while we were here, me and Ray, this basically still got power to it, but again, it's just not connected. So it's just like burning up. And there you go. Basically long story short, I spent no joke all day. You're talking like two, three hours. I actually started cutting wires. I opened up the panel over there. I'm following these two blue wires that go to the solenoid. Upon testing, it looks like this red little board that's in the base that I was showing you before. One of the outputs is stuck to close. I can't do anything about it. I don't see anything physical on the board. Besides like those little microchips, one of them looks maybe burnt or not totally connected. So I do plan to try to solder that back down real quick, but I do have an idea in mind. I did order the piece on Amazon. Basically, I'm gonna be trying a basic relay. That should work. Cause again, in all honesty, with these type of guns and this kind of solenoid, it's almost like how the LED is on the barrel. See that barrel? Basically, when I pull the trigger, the LED goes off. Basically gonna be doing the same exact thing when it comes to the solenoid. We're loading up House of Dead 3 again. <laughs> but yeah, that is my idea, and hopefully with that, our player two solenoid will be back. Now, my worst case, and it's really worst, 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 worst case scenario, I would probably in line link the player one solenoid to the player two. What does that mean? Player one, if you're firing player one, it will also fire player two. So essentially if you are playing one player, it will also fire player two. I do not want to do that, but as a last resort, as if this relay doesn't work, I would just do that and just call it a day. This way at least you do get solenoid action. Because right now, playing player two without the solenoid, it kind of sucks. Uh, and I can already imagine in a reseller mind state, it's gonna be a hard sell. Now it's actually pretty funny, like I said, you can actually, it's just like a Pandora box. If I hold down player one start, it will actually exit out of the, the screen. Um, again, we can, we can load up, again, Far Cry, Aliens, Far Cry is pretty cool, we'll run that. Uh, and again, you could set it to coin mode and such. I really want to show off the service mode, but the main thing, and, and I, again, watch Ray's stream. Uh, I mentioned something to Ray because it was very funny. Ray was playing it and he goes, oh, this gun needs calibrating. And I was like, no, Ray. These type of guns, this is the big thing, and I mentioned it in the stream. Many people don't understand that this gun, it's, it's a joystick. That's really what it is. It is a joystick. Um, some people don't understand that. And as you can see right now, this is a hard mounted on the rail shooter. You know, it's like, it's like set at this length. Um, you'll be seeing very soon, I'm going to have a pedestal build of something close to this. Um, basically, you know, doesn't matter if you have a 200 inch screen, a 10 inch screen, it, you know, whether you're five feet away, two feet away, you will never get the crosshair to line up 
with the gun. That's the big thing you need to understand with these mounted guns. You really, honestly, you need the crosshairs on. That's what's like the fun of it right now. But basically right now, my gun is all the way to the left. I mean, I'm, I'm really like where this box is. My, my, my pointer is there, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's off is basically what I'm trying to get at. You will never get 100% accuracy. This is not a light gun. Ray over there was talking about like, oh, let's modify it with gun for IR. And I said, if you could do a tethered gun for IR, cool, but it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Now, what's really cool is that the actual game does have a calibration to it, which I'll try to launch real quick. I don't want to do too many cuts, but I could basically press the test menu button and you could calibrate the gun. And we did that on stream. But in all honesty, like right now, I'm all the way at the top left. You can see that red. If I go down, the bottom one goes zero. If I go right, we're at zero. That's, that's what it is. There's no calibration really. There's no like, you know, am I aiming there? As you can see, it's, these are using potentiometers, pots, dials. That's what's being read. The only advantage to this thing is I can at least see and make sure my flamethrower button works and my grenade and my trigger. But if I pull the trigger, it's gonna run the calibration screen. Again, no matter what, you know, you wanna go top left, down, right, it's, it's, it is what it is. There's no calibrating to it. Uh, so again, stay tuned. I do have, I don't wanna to talk too much about it, but it is in the works. I do have a pedestal build coming up with these types of gun. Now, if I go back, it's got some basic stuff. We'll actually do it real quick and then we'll probably end the video. If I do the cartridge, oh, it's a 12 and an 18. Uh, it was set to 18. I might as well leave it at 18. There's no difference. I thought it was gonna be a four bullet. You can basically set how many lives, the difficulty, and the coin. You could hide games. I don't know why you would do that, but there you go. Demo sounds and such. The other thing that's kind of silly is that when you exit the service menu, it restarts the computer. So you'll right now see that it is an actual PC uh, that boots up. Um, it's got like a core two duo. Uh, I don't think it, it's not even quad core on it. Uh, but either way, it's a PC um, and it's got like this boot disc. So turn it off. And now it's gonna like restart. That's the only thing that kind of sucks. I mean, there it is. We have an American Megatrends. And I actually removed that, that, that USB drive and that was stuck and it said like, can't find bootable uh, device. Uh, and yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's it. Honestly though, it's a cool system, meaning I'm thinking money. I'm thinking business. I'm thinking putting quarters in this. This this should be a, a pretty easy sell. As far as now the cabinet condition, it's got scuffs on it. The artwork on it is, um, I, I, it has nothing to do with the games. Um, the vinyl is ripping off. This is not T-molding. This is a, actually edge banding. Um, it is what it is. I have no desire to reskin it. And again, like I said, I have no desire to keep this thing. Uh, it's great. It makes for great content. And now my job is to fix it to make it 100% and sell it off. Again, it needs work. It needs work. And uh, I'm happy to take on that challenge. But... Oh no, not too bad. Now, if I launch real quick, let's say Aliens. We already saw Far Cry real quick. We'll launch Aliens. Um, Aliens is like, uh, and Ray said it's like the Linux-based system, uh, the Linux style of Aliens. I don't know, whatever. The only main thing I know is that this does not save high scores. Uh, on Far Cry, I did pretty good. I exited out, I went back in, and there you go. It's just like your basic Pandora box. If you don't touch it for like five minutes, it's gonna go back to the home screen. And luckily it does have an attract mode video to it. Although that attract mode video is running and showing a game that I don't really know what it is. I thought it was Halo, but it's not. All in all, it is what it is. Uh, Ray was talking about like, what should we do if we do a mod? Like, what are you thinking, Vic? Honestly, uh, <laughs> I froze. I don't know, I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned and watch what the future holds with this type of light gun build that I'm, I'm doing. It's not even a light gun, it's an on-rail shooter. Um, these mounted guns. Um, 
Ray and Joel like this cabinet design for arcade uh, like on builds. This is big. It's a big piece of real estate. Again, you're talking 5.5 feet long. Um, that's a lot. That is a lot. Whereas, you know, if I did my Bivik cabinet, you know, you just need this. But then the light gun, you come back. It's not like permanent real estate that you're wasting. Um, yeah, I'm going to measure out the cabinet. It is a cool style cabinet. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just... I. It, I, I don't, I already, I don't want to repeat myself, but yes, uh, my mod to it. If we were going to do, let's just say a light gun build, like Ray was suggesting gun for IR, this whole TV comes off and I put a TV mount and we put a 55 to a 65 inch screen. That would be it. We remove the guns, just like Ray suggested, remove these guns, put a holster cutout and there you go. Um, and again, stay tuned. And the biggest thing, these guns, if you're going to do a PC based system, which is what I'm doing in the future, um, you miss out on several games because it is not raw mouse input. Yes, you do have Demule shooter, but not all games work with Demule. You'll have to just hear me talk about that later on. But right now that is basically it. Now, as far as what you may see, I don't even want to go into it. No, I'm not. Uh, my main objective, like I said, tomorrow I should be getting the parts to fix player two. The other little stuff, and like I said, and I mentioned to you before that I found this 12 volt toy thing. Um, you'll just have to stay tuned for the next video because I got a little bit of um, a show to show you. <laughs> and again, it's really great because I have some parts lying around, so it really doesn't cost me a thing. Let's first focus on getting player two fixed. Well guys, there you have it. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think of this cabinet. Do you like this cabinet design? Would you get this cabinet design? Um, I would, if there is a very popular thing and people want it, I would possibly look into making a CNC cut. Joel is already encouraging me to do that. Um, it's just, I gotta hear what the world and the community has to think and say. Um, yes, but there you have it. Big VP Game Case Arcades, another free 99 marketplace find. Whew. Let's get you fixed up.